It's okay, just don't delay smiling. Is there a bright day in your head? Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, 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 welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. All right, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, I want to welcome you again and say thank you for being out there. And um, I got a special video that I'm really making in response to uh, a YouTuber and also a therapist by the name of psychologist by the name of Judy Rosenberg, who has a show called <laughs> Dr. Judy What the Freud which I would have thought was what the something else, but um, I'm mentioning her only because not only were her parents Holocaust survivors, but very seldom and very rare will you find therapists, life coaches that are willing to say anything about racism. Okay, it's the big elephant in the room that really nobody wants to say anything about. And that's probably one of the problems that I have with most of these people out here that, cons that that consider themselves doing this kind of work. And so we have to be uh, monolithic to the point where we dismiss this aspect of our healing and we just talk about it universally as if racism isn't a mental illness, as if racism isn't a um, form of narcissism. And so I really appreciate her doing a program on this past Thursday. And so if any of y'all get a chance, please go back. And I'm going to give her a big ups again. Um, Judy, what Dr. Judy, what the Freud. Not what the, huh, but what the Freud. Check her out. And she comes on Thursdays with, with a live show on UPN. And, um... Oh, and by the way, the second one was Ross Rosenberg. Ross Rosenberg. I don't know if they're related or anything. It's amazing that you see all these people out here um, talking about narcissism, mental illness, and all kinds of stuff, but they don't dare say anything about racism. So I kind of like dismiss them right off the bat because I know that they don't have the courage to deal with what's really going on, in my opinion. So... I have to make that assessment because as a person that's black, person of color, that's non-white, um, y'all just seem to dismiss the big elephant in the room, which is part of the narcissism that permeates this country, and it disguises itself in racism. And I just have said that over the, I don't have a PhD. I don't have no degree or any of that kind of shit like that, but I work with, in terms of children, in terms of the musicians that I've been around, in my life experiences, my mother, my father, just being exposed to, uh, to these personalities, um, I find it so transforming, again, that somebody could say something and let me know that they're in tune to what's going on in the universe, in my opinion. When you look at racism, and if you don't want to compare it, and you don't want to say the narcissistic, the narcissistic behavior that you see when you're describing a person, that you don't see that on a universal level when you talk about this government and when you talk about the projections that they do on people that don't look like them, people that are non-white, uh, the triangulation with the other races against the scapegoat race, which is the 
you know, black and brown bodies. They're the pretty much the scapegoats of America. The golden child is the white people. I've said this more than one time, and maybe because I don't have the PhD and the DDDEFG behind my name, people don't take me serious. But I got a lot of life experience that says I know damn well what I'm talking about. And maybe I just don't speak to English, King's English the way you want me to. Hell, it ain't my language, no way. So, and I know that God is not impressed with how well I can articulate verbiage. He's impressed with my heart and if my heart is real or not in what I try to do. So I try to navigate my life that way and I fall short sometimes, but I try to live it now in truth. Once I see the error of my ways, okay, once I seen that I was on the path of destruction, you know, over 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I can say these things unhypocritically because I see the black race as being the projection of the evilness of the dominant society and the brown race. We've been projected on all this hate, all this uh, ignorance, all of this uh, madness. I think Jane Elliott says it best when she said that you guys can afford to have the ignorance. You can afford to have the freedom to have the ignorance to not even know what you do and affect somebody else. So you're even free to be ignorant about that fact. And you spend your lives every day doing things and telling people to pick themselves up by the bootstrap and they only have to think like this and yada, yada, yada. But you don't want to talk about a construct that has been built on madness that affects people every single day. And no matter how much you accomplish in your family, because we understand that everything starts there. We understand that race also is a construct created by two gen of crazy men. I can't even think of their names right now. Okay? Because the world wasn't always like that in that aspect of this black and white madness that's going on on the planet. And the thing about it is all these people that do life coaching and all these people that talk about this, they don't talk about the race aspect of it because if they did, then probably we would get somewhere. And But they don't want to because it will cause too much controversy. But that is where the healing is. The healing is right there. So I just want to thank Judy Rosenberg. I really do. And I, I do. I want to encourage y'all to go. You know, Judy's from Canada, living in Los Angeles now. But I think that from a different perspective, it's not too many Caucasian people that I would want to listen to, like I said, because they overlook the elephant in the room and they want to use this board as if racism is not an infection, is not a psychological disease that has affected this whole damn country. And especially the country where white people rule. Caucasians, maybe I should say. Is that a little better word? Where Caucasians rule. And they've created and constructed a world where everything that looks like them is fine. And it's okay. And they can uh, be omitted from their sins. They can do all kinds of mayhem. They can do all kinds of injustice to other people. But the dominant other Caucasians uh, triangulate, they gaslight, and then they have these institutions that help them gaslight, uh, hide evidence, and do everything against the scapegoat child. This is narcissism front and center. And I do want to thank Dr. Rosenberg again, and Dr. Ross. Rosenberg for having the courage to call Donald Trump out as a narcissistic person. Uh, he probably lost a lot of followers for doing that, but that's okay. I see you, Ross. I see you really well, and I really appreciate your work. I have your book as well. Uh, um, so I just think that this is very important. And I also want to encourage more black and brown bodies to get involved with the mental health 
field to be more of a catalyst in your community for helping people return to their greatness mentally and to point out what is abnormal behavior that we've rationalized and consider normal because we live in a freaking narcissistic crazy society so that's all I want to say y'all about this I'll be back a little later with another video talking about high conflict parents mothers more specifically thank you for being out there I appreciate y'all uh, and now that it's getting a little cold out there you know I gotta start making some more videos so <laughs> thanks be blessed and I'll see you in the next video bye bye